Hello fellow YouTube friends, followers, fools and flabbergasters, my name is Maislin and it's time for another easy PvE build guide. Today's build of choice is Power Blade Sworn. Power Blade Sworn is a very unique build for instance content that excels at providing burst and cleave damage. It provides itself with good amounts of might and fury and can further share alacrity without adjusting gear at all, making it a convenient choice for boon supply. Through Unshakable Mountain and the trade line defense, it can become incredibly tanky by just changing traits and a few utility skills. Let's do a quick rundown of the key mechanics of Bladesworn first. The main mechanic in terms of damage is Dragon Trigger. Activating this roots you in place and Dragon Trigger is cancelled by any movement or skill cast with a cast time. You can still use instant cast skills like Flow Stabilizer or For Great Justice. Once activated it charges up bullets. The more bullets you charge, the more damage the Dragon Slash of your choice does. Dragon Slash Force is the strongest out of the three and it's a melee skill. Dragon Slash Boost is a dash that's slightly weaker and Dragon Slash Reach does half the damage and is ranged. Whichever slash you use, you want to charge up all bullets if possible because the damage of the slashes increases disproportionately. Now getting used to this can be tricky because you're very vulnerable while rooted. In order to alleviate some problems that that can cause, the two remaining skills in Dragon Trigger give you some movement and defense. Skill 4 Trigger Guard gives you Aegis allowing you to block an attack. Skill 5 Flicker Step is a blink. It allows you to cover a short distance when you're already in Dragon Trigger, which is very helpful. On top of these two, the trait Dragon Scale Defense grants you stability when you enter Dragon Trigger, allowing you to bypass incoming control effects for a short duration. Now, whenever you activate a Dragon Slash, you land on the weapon Gun Saber afterwards. Gun Saber includes another skill bar and is unique to Bladesworn 2. You can only alternate between one weapon set, Gun Saber and Dragon Trigger, so you cannot weapon swap in combat on Bladesworn. Keep that in mind when choosing your weapon set. All Gun Saber skills aside from Break Step have both ranged and melee components to them, so you can use them to stay at range whenever you need to. Another difference between Bladesworn and other warrior builds is that instead of Adrenaline, Bladesworn relies on Flow to use burst skills. Simply attacking does not generate flow. You have to have skills or traits that usually generate Adrenaline as that Adrenaline is converted into flow. You can gain flat amounts of flow or stack up positive flow to receive flow over time. Our main skill to generate flow is Flow Stabilizer. It grants positive flow over time and another flat amount of flow if you have Fury when activating it. Alright, let's dive into the rotation. The general rotation concept is simple but requires some practice to get used to. Whatever else you do, always enter Dragon Trigger on cooldown. It does around 60% of your damage and makes your damage graph look like a heart monitor. Throughout the entirety of the rotation, always use Tactical Reload and Flow Stabilizer on cooldown. The only exception for Tactical Reload is that you shouldn't use it in Dragon Trigger as it cancels it. For the opener you can precast the following skills. Break Step, Artillery Slash, Cyclone Trigger, To The Limit, Flow Stabilizer and Tactical Reload. This is done for two reasons. The first, the Gun Saber skills are cast to pre-stack Fierce's Fire. To The Limit, Flow Stabilizer and Tactical Reload are used so that you can open with a Dragon Trigger. So after the precast, enter Dragon Trigger immediately and use Dragon Slash Force as soon as the charges are filled with Tactical Reload that takes just over one second. After Dragon Trigger you will always land a Gun Saber. Then there are two different scenarios depending on whether Weapon Swap is available. When Weapon Swap is available you want to use the following skills. Blooming Fire, then Weapon Swap. Dragon's Ross or Pistol 5, this will use all charges on it. Gun Stinger, Pistol 4 to recharge 3 stacks of Dragon's Raw, And then Dragon's Raw again. Then you want to use Sword 3 and Auto Attacks until Dragon Trigger comes up. In Scenario 2, Weapon Swap is not available. In that case, stay on Gun Saber and use all skills aside from Break Step on cooldown. The only exception is that Artillery Slash or Gun Saber 3 should only be used with at least 2 charges because otherwise it's weaker than an auto attack. Once Dragon Trigger comes up, repeat from there. The rotation I propose here is a bit easier than the benchmark rotation because I replaced Dragon Spike Mine and Overcharged Cartridges with 2 Signet skills. So you can use it as an entry point into Bladesworn and then work your way towards the more complex rotation if you want to. Alright, CC skills for Defiance Bar damage. Your main source of CC is your Dragon Slash, that is both good and bad. When you can damage the boss through a CC phase, this is great. When this coincides with Invulnerability, this costs you a lot of your damage. The only other CC skill that you have in your kit is Artillery Slash and then only if you use it with at least 2 charges. For additional CC you can use a main hand mace, it's not a large DPS loss. Just remember that you cannot weapon swap in combat, so you have to decide prior to entering combat on what to do. Alright gear, since Bladesworn does not include a native crit chance increase, 
we have to obtain some critical chance elsewhere. That's why we're going to use a mix of berserkers and assassins in terms of the gear prefix. In general I chose gear that is convenient for swapping between Bladeswan, Berserker and Spellbreaker because they all include different levels of crit chance. There are many different gear combinations that you can use, it's just important that you reach 75% critical chance in the hero panel. The remaining 25% critical chance will come from Fury. On Bladeswan it is very important to have 100% critical chance, because as soon as a hit of Dragon Trigger does not critically strike, you will notice it. If you only have exotic gear, you will probably need to add another Assassin's piece to maximize the crit chance. The sigils on the weapons are Force and Accuracy, and the Relic of Choice is the Relic of the Thief. In terms of traits, we're going to use Strength, Tactics and Bladeswarm. Strength and Tactics simply include the highest damage modifiers. In Tactics you can choose between Martial Cadence and Phalanx Strength. Phalanx Strength leads to great passive sustain as every stack of might you apply to yourself or allies will heal you. With the trait Unyielding Dragon and Bladeswarm you will passively stack up might stacks while charging Dragon Trigger, meaning that you get healed in the process. Martial Cadence on the other hand is very good for your subgroup as it provides a decent uptime on stability. If you want to share alacrity with allies, simply use Daring Dragon and Blades 1. The rotation plays almost the same, the only difference is that Dragon Trigger charges up faster. Alright, moving on to the open world build. For open world it can make sense to make a build more forgiving so that you can sustain on your own. So let's look at things you can do for increasing general survivability, covering boons on yourself and dealing with conditions and control effects. Let's start with increasing general survivability. In order to increase general survivability, we'll abuse the synergy between ammo skills, tactical reload and unshakable mountain. The latter gives you over 1300 barrier every time you use the last charge of an ammo skill. Next, using defense grants great sustain at no cost and damage when you're alone and a small amount of damage when doing group content. When you decide to use defense, I highly recommend using Brave Stride in Strength 2. It provides stability on movement skills which allows you to easily maintain it for the trade stalwart strength. That trait gives you 10% increased damage whenever you have stability. Both pistol skills trigger this, as well as Savage Leap on Sword, Break Step on Gun Saber and Flicker Step in Dragon Trigger. Try to cast a movement skill right before going into Dragon Trigger to make sure it hits with stability up. The second damage modifier that you have in Strength is Call the Weak. You don't really make use of this when you're alone, so as soon as you have other people covering weakness for you, your damage goes up. On top of those two nice damage modifiers, defense includes quite a few tools for survivability. The trait Adrenal Health heals you passively for decent amounts as long as you keep using your burst skills. Defy Pain makes you immune to strike damage for 4 seconds every 30 seconds when you use Tactical Reload. On top of these, you will cover a decent uptime on protection and resolution, reducing both incoming strike and condition damage. Now, the most important single trait for survivability is Unshakable Mountain. To make better use of this trait, we're going to exchange to the Limit and Signet of Might for additional ammo skills. My favorite option to replace Signet of Might is Shake It Off. It's a stun break that also cleanses conditions and it also affects nearby allies for both effects. This is the safest option you can use as you have no other means of cleansing conditions or breaking a stun. When it comes to the heal skill, my favorite is Combat Stimulant. It's another strong ammo healing skill. In case you don't need the heal from it, you can use it twice to provide self quickness and vigor uptime. With all the ammo skills you have, and Tactical Reload resetting most of them on cast, that amounts to massive amounts of barrier that will make you almost unkillable as long as you keep using the ammo skills. Now, in case you cannot go into melee range, you can camp Gun Saber and use Dragon Slash Reach instead of Dragon Slash Force. That reduces your damage a lot, but it's still better than just standing at range doing nothing. Since the weapon set is only used for a low amount of time, you can basically use any weapon set you want with this setup. Main Hand Axe includes a bit of vulnerability, additional fury and another ammo skill. Staff is a great support weapon that provides area healing and boons, and Hammer and Maces provide high defiance bar damage on demand. Before we move on to boon coverage, there are two additional changes you can make to fully bunker down to solo very difficult content. Might Makes Right in Strength will boost your healing and endurance recovery at the cost of a 21% damage modifier from Berserker's power. It's usually not needed, but it can help if you're insecure or just starting with the build. The second adjustment is to use Cleansing Iron Defense. It removes a bunch of conditions on every hit of Dragon Trigger and stacks the flow passively when you get hit. Last but not least, you can replace any piece of Berserkers here with Knights, giving you toughness in exchange for power and ferocity. This is a 1 to 1 trade off in damage, but can provide a more relaxed experience. Next up, we got Boon Coverage. On Bladeswan, the most important boon is Fury, because you want to make sure all your hits of Dragon Trigger are critical hits. We'll cover that easily with Flow Stabilizer and Break Step. 
Remember that Tactical Reload recharges an ammo stack on all your Bladesworn skills, allowing you to cover boons more easily as well. So the effective cooldown of most of your skills is actually lower than shown in the tooltip. When it comes to might, we don't have a lot of sources in the kit. Unyielding Dragon will make you stack up might for your Dragon Trigger hits. This is really nice because in the most important moments, so when hitting with Dragon Trigger, you will have a decent amount of might up. This is another reason why using Daring Dragon in Blade Swan is a DPS loss on yourself. When you're alone, you lose the might stacks and the stun on Dragon Trigger when using Daring Dragon. An upside is that it makes Dragon Trigger charge faster, reducing the time you are rooted noticeably. That also reduces the chances to get interrupted and is thus easier to execute. When it comes to quickness, the only source for it you have is the second cast of Combat Stimulant. Only use that when you don't need the heal. While you do notice the lack of quickness in general gameplay, it's not bad on Bladesworn because Dragon Trigger charges up at the same pace without it. When it comes to survivability boons like Protection and Resolution, using Defense provides a native partial uptime on those. For a better uptime on Protection, Resolution and Regeneration, you can use a Relic of Durability. This costs only a fairly small amount of damage, and Resolution will further reduce incoming strike damage via Hardened Armor. If you can, in Open World, make use of Jade Protocols. They give you 150 additional toughness, vitality, condition damage and power, as well as all boons aside from stability, resistance and resolution entry combat with a 90 second cooldown. The free stats are very nice to have, especially for harder Open World content. In case you want easy access to boons in Open World, especially quickness, you can abuse the synergy between the Relic of the Cavalier and Blast from the Skyscale to apply lots of Ages, Resistance, Might and Quickness to yourself. It has an internal cooldown of 1 second and applies the boons on every hit of Blast. Since this also covers Might, you can use Daring Dragon to cover all important defensive boons on yourself. Just remember that this gives you only a head start on boon coverage and does not last for longer fights. Last but not least, how to deal with incoming conditions and control effects. When it comes to cleansing conditions, you have Shake It Off ready on your bar. On top of that, you can use Mending as a heal skill for a short cooldown heal that cleanses conditions. When it comes to dealing with control effects, again, Shake It Off provides a stun break for you and allies around you. As explained before, using Defense and Brave Stride and Strength allows you to cover a really good uptime on stability. That way, you can pump through a lot of incoming control effects natively. Even though Bladeswan is a specialization that can take a little while to get used to, I think it plays very well and satisfying in open world. Defense retains great damage while providing a lot of safety nets and survivability, and the large amounts of barrier from Unshakable Mountain are incredible for survivability. Alright, that's it for today. Feel free to like and subscribe for the YouTube algorithm. I hope this video was insightful for you and made you want to try Power Blades 1. See you next time and happy dragon slashing!